Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, in this tutorial, we will discuss Lesson 2 of Chapter 1, Relationships and Ecosystems. Remember, our driving question for this chapter continues to be, how do organisms interact? However, our objectives for this particular lesson are explain ecosystems, communities, and populations, and describe how food chains, food web, and symbiotic relationships work. Wow, look at them go! Did you know that a cheetah chasing its prey can run up to 70 miles per hour or 110 kilometers per hour? That takes a lot of energy. How do organisms depend on one another for energy? Here are your vocabulary words for this lesson. Ecosystem, population, community, food chain, food web, symbiosis, predator, prey, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Tennessee during this time of the year can be a beautiful place to explore ecosystems. As you look at the forest here, a tree forest, you can see that there are many living organisms as well as non-living items of this ecosystem. An ecosystem includes all the living and non-living things in an environment. For the living things of the environment, we call those biotic factors. Biotic refers to living or alive. For the non-living things of an, organ of an ecosystem, we call those abiotic factors, meaning things that are not alive. Can you look at this picture and identify the biotic and abiotic factors of this ecosystem. As you notice, there are trees. There are different kinds of trees. When we look at different kinds of organisms, each species makes up a population. As you can see, there are several of the same type of trees. Each same tree represents a member of a single species of trees. For example, the evergreen tree. However, when you have different types of organisms or different species living in the same ecosystem, we call that a community of organisms. Stop the presentation at this point and please refer to the previous slide to respond to the following. List the parts that make up an ecosystem from the smallest to the largest and place in your interactive student notebook. The process skills that we'll be using is how to read a photo and your comprehension skill of main idea and supporting detail. How are food chains alike? As you can see in this slide, all energy starts with the sun and then travels from the sun to a producer of energy, which would be a plant or some sort of tree. The producer of energy is then consumed the first consumer that eats either the berries or the nuts or the grass, we would call that consumer a primary consumer. The consumer that then eats the consumer that eats the berry or the grass, we would call that consumer a secondary consumer. Energy flows in one direction in a food chain. The energy in a food chain starts with the sun and then flows from the sun to the producer to the primary producer 
to the secondary producer. And then the energy will then end with the decomposer. What are food webs made of? In most food chains, a single organism is not eaten by only one consumer. For example, a mouse may be eaten by a bobcat or a hawk. This makes the mouse a part of two separate food chains. These chains can be combined to form an even bigger food web. A food web is a network of food chains that have some links in common. A food web may look complicated, but as you can see, food webs are just several food chains. They are chains, arrows, represents the energy flow from one organism to another. Arrows pointing to an organism show the living things that the organism eats. Arrows pointing away from an organism show the animals that eat that organism. A predator is an animal that hunts other animals for food, whereas the animal that's being hunted for food is called the prey. Living things interact with each other in a number of different ways. You have already seen that some organisms hunt others, some organisms are predators, some organisms are prey. These relationships are examples of symbiotic relationships. Interdependence is the reliance of organisms on other organisms for their survival. There are two types of symbiotic relationships between organisms that can last over time. The two types are mutualism and commensalism. Mutualism is a symbiotic relationship where both organisms benefit from each other. Whereas commensalism is a symbiotic relationship where one organism benefits from the other organism without harming the organism. Parasitism is a symbiotic relationship where one organism benefits from another organism and harms the other organism. Parasitism is a symbiotic relationship in which one organism benefits and the other is harmed, as in the photo in the upper right hand corner of the tick. Well, the tick will benefit from sucking the blood from the host, your dog or your cat. However, the dog or the cat is harmed from this relationship. Parasites live on host organisms and survive by using the host organism's body for nutrients. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like for you to answer this question. How do producers and consumers obtain energy? And put the answers in your interactive student notebook. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here is a quick vocabulary exercise that I would like for you to, again, put in your interactive student notebook. Please write the word and the correct definition in your student notebook. Please continue with your vocabulary review by matching the correct word with its correct definition and place your answers in your interactive student notebook on the left hand side. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your reading comprehension skills. I would like for you to draw this main idea and supporting detail diagram in your interactive student notebook. The first one has been filled out for you. All food webs have a producer which gets its energy from the sun. Both food webs contain consumers. Please complete the next two supporting details.